Okay, uh, we had a technical error, so I've already made the first bend about uh, 70 degrees just off the center of the uh, wire. And that's the wrong side of the marker. I'm going to lay that across the tooth, and then I'm going to mark where the line is for the cusp on the other side of the tooth, and make the other. So I've got the little triangle there. I'm going to take my square beak, come on the inside. I'm going to get as close to the angle as I can. And I'm going to put my thumb in between them here. And I'm going to make as small an eyelet as I can. And then coming over to the other side, I'm going to make sure the wire is perpendicular to the pliers. And I'm going to make the other eyelet again as, as tight as I can on the eyelets and the two wires should line up like that. This isn't gonna fit your model right now, so I'm going to grab across the eyelet like that. I'm going to bend the bar at 45 degrees, do the other side, bar at 45 degrees. So the eyelets are now 45 degrees to the buckle bar, and they fit into the preparations. Now I'm going to take the round beak, put it inside the eyelet like that, and I'm going to, I've got this angled a little bit that direction, and a little bit, I have the buckle bar at about 30 degrees to my pliers there, and I'm going to bend that back 90 degrees. Nice 90 degree bend there. And I'm going to put this onto the model. I'm going to put it into my preparations. I'm going to gently let it sit back like that and I want to see the wire go directly to the embrasure, which it does. So I'm going to mark it where it touches the embrasure and now I need to bend it down and just a little bit distal. So I'm going to grab, take that, I'm going to grab it like this at the mark and I'm going to bend it a little down and a little, little distal. And then I'm going to check the fit. I'm going to put the eyelets into the preparations like that. And I've bent it just a tiny bit too much. So I'm going to just bring it back just a touch. I want to keep it in that embrasure. Put my eyelets into the preparation. And now I'm going to mark where it's coming out of the lingual embrasure there. And I'm mark just past where it leaves the contact with the teeth on the lingual embrasure and I'm going to bend it down like that. Put it back on the model and it's hitting the model over here. I need to take that. I'm just going to bend that wire out of the way. I don't want to cut it off until I'm absolutely sure that that's excess wire. So she's it's coming down like that, it's looking okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just about where the gingival margins are here, I'm going to grab the wire, and I'm just going to curve it to the mesial a little bit. Notice, again, I'm doing all the work on the mesial. I'm going to finish the mesial arm completely before we go to the distal. So I've curved it mesial, but it's a little too far off the tissue now. I'm going to grab it where I made the curve. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. And that was a tiny, that was a little too much. I want to get it so the wire is about a nice one millimeter off of the tissue. I want to end the tag so that it's about, if I imagine a line that's halfway between the midline and the gingival margins, I want to cut the wire I want to have my tag about there, which is about where I've made this bend to get the excess wire out of the way. So I'm going to cut it, and I want to. I'm going to. We're going to make a dog leg retentive tag. So I want to bend that so that it's perpendicular to the wire here. So I'm going to just grab the wire, last two millimeters of the wire. I'm going to bend it down at about a 30 degree angle until. The wire just touches the pallet there and it holds my tag off of the off of the tissue. 
and my eyelets are in the preparations. So we now have three points of reference. We've got the two eyelets in the preparation and we have the, the dog leg tag there. It was actually a little too much. I'm just gonna back off this dog leg angle, just a touch. And now, well, let me fit, put it back on. So there it's touching the model. I've got a nice relief there. I'm gonna come to the distal arm now. Again, I'm gonna grab it right at the bottom of the arm. My wire is at a slight angle to the plier there. It's about a, a 45 degree, the buckle bar is about a 45 degree angle to the jaw of the pliers. And I'm gonna push that right over again, 90 degrees. On the distal arm, you often end up having to do just a little bit more than 90 degrees. I'm gonna put it on and check, and my tag over here is no longer hitting the model. Always reference your two eyelets. My eyelets are in the preps. My tag's no longer hitting the model. That means that I'm hitting a little too hard over here. So I have two options. I can reduce this bend slightly, or I can take this arm of the eyelet and push it forward. The eyelet's already um, small enough, so I'm just gonna back off that bend just a little bit. And now my dog leg touches the model again. This model's been demonstrated on a number of times. We got a chip there, which doesn't make this easier, or make it so it fits nicely but what the heck I've marked where the tooth where the wire hits the tooth and enters the embrasure so I need to bring this down and just a tiny bit mesial grab it at my mark here grab it at the mark I'm gonna bring it down just a tiny bit mesial again put it on the model and check it's fitting in the embrasure now mark where it comes out of the embrasure here on the lingual. I'm gonna make a curve coming down onto the into that distal embrasure. If I try to put it back on the model now it's not gonna fit because it's gonna run into the model in the pallet again. So I'm gonna take my excess, bend it up out of the way, then I can check the fit. So I put my eyelets in the preparation. I put my dog leg down and I can bend this down a little bit more. So I'm gonna move just a little more buckle and give it some more bend. Fit it on there again. Now notice what I've done is I've angled this mesial instead of bending it straight down and it's now running into the distal of the molar right there. This is a really common mistake that happens with students is they make this too tight in this area as they bend it forward. So watch for that. So I wanna bring that, straighten it up a little so that it's going, you want your um, arms to go through the center of the embrasures, not to curve tightly around the teeth. So that's now going around the, through the center of the embrasure. So now I can come down here again to the uh, level of the gingival margin. And I'm gonna grab that. I'm going to curve it mesial. Again, I always curve them to the mesial and I suggest you curve them to the mesial. When we do the acrylic, having that curve to the mesial is going to make a difference. It's gonna make it easier for you because you'll be able to um, make your, it'll give you more options in forming your acrylic. Some students like to leave the tags going straight down into the palette, but then you have to have basically a full palette on your appliance in order to cover it with acrylic. So I'm just looking at how it's adapting to the tissue right now. It's a little bit out from the tissue there, so I'm gonna bring it in and again, bring it a little bit mesial. I wanna get it so again, it's about a nice millimeter of relief from the palette, matching the mesial arm. Then I'm gonna cut it. Bend my 
dog leg on the last two millimeters of the wire and I should end up with a clasp where the eyelets are in the preparations on the buckle. The buckle bar is a millimeter from the buckle of the tooth. The arms are sitting in the embrasures across the occlusal. They come down into the lingual embrasures, bisecting the lingual embrasures. The arms come across the palatal tissue about a millimeter across uh, above the tissue to allow room for the acrylic and the dog legs touch the model, which holds these arms off the model so that they can't fall down and collapse when you're doing the acrylic, and that gives you the space to encapsulate the um, arms in the acrylic. Your clasp should be passive. It shouldn't be stuck. So if I turn this over, it should fall right off of the model. And I should ideally, well, you should be able to drop it and it just falls right into place on the tooth.